Okay, we'll call to order the uh, regular meeting of the Batavia City Council for Tuesday, September 8th, 2015. As you all please rise for a brief invocation to be filed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Tonight, as we welcome the arrival of the fall season, we are ever mindful that in the past uh, 50 years, over 10,000 new trees have been planted in our community, and they will prevent, present to us the beauty of the season with all the color will also present to us the challenges of picking up all the leaves that will fall, but we do that with appreciation for the work of Mother Nature and making our community such an attractive place to live. Tonight, as always, we want to remember those from our community who are serving on foreign soil in the defense and liberties of the United States of America, and we just ask that a special blessing be showered upon them. Also, we just ask for guidance and direction and understanding as we di discuss and debate and approve the various items on our agenda tonight. Uh, we ask for all these blessings. Amen. Alderman Wolf, would you leave us the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Ask the city clerk to please call the roll. Brown? Here. Rosado? Here. Atac? Here. Star? Here. Chanzit? Here. Wool? Here. Alderman Fisher is currently absent. O'Brien? Here. Callahan? Here. Homan? Here. Mueller? Here. Bottoman? Here. Cerrone? Here. McFadden? Here. Let the record reflect that 13 of the 14 uh, elected aldermen of the city council are present in the county for the evening of the meeting, so we have the necessary quorum to conduct business. Uh, moving then to item number four, which is items to be removed, added, or changed on the agenda. We need a motion to allow Alderman Fisher to attend via phone. He's on the line. Well, he is. I didn't think he was there. It's reasonable. Oh, yeah. No, that's He's here, he but is. I don't think we need a motion to have him. Yeah, we need a motion we do to attend on meeting. the phone, but I didn't. I would have called for it, but you said he was not there. No, he's, he, he responded. He said he was Oh, there. you're here, Alderman Fisher? Yes, sir. Okay, yeah. I need a motion then to allow Alderman Fisher to attend by the phone. So moved. Second. Moved by Alderman Callahan, second by Alderman Atek for the Aye. approval of Alderman Fisher to attend by phone. Court call the roll. Callahan? Aye. Homan? Aye. Mueller? Aye. Botterman? Aye. Cerrone? Aye. McFadden? Aye. Brown? Aye. Rosado? Aye. Atek? Aye. Stark? Aye. Kansas? Aye. Wolf? Aye. O'Brien? Aye. Your Honor, what? could I have a point of clarification on this? Sure. And only because I just want to make sure everybody's clear on everything. This has been brought up at other times, and our attorney sent a memo out maybe a month and a half ago about the procedure for allowing an alderman to attend by telephone. It was my understanding through that memo that unless somebody makes a motion to not allow, there's no sense in making a motion that they're, they're already allowed. Is that correct? Could you clarify that? Just yeah, I, I did look at it, and I know it's been the tradition of, of calling for a motion, but we don't actually need one. Uh, so, but it, it's been the tradition, so that's the way it's been done, but it isn't necessary. Well, I just, I, you know, again, for clarification, and so we're always doing it consistently, because after your memo, I stopped doing that at the Committee of a Whole meeting. Right. So I think we, we ought to stay consistent. So however you want to do it, Mayor, it doesn't matter to me. I just, it's obviously... Um, technicality that is much to do about nothing as right. far as most of us are concerned. <laughs> so anyway, we've passed the motion 13 yes, no no's, uh, one te temporary absent, so uh, motion's been approved. Alderman Fisher, you're now officially in the meeting. Okay, moving then to item number four, which are items to be removed, added, or changed on the agenda. Alderman Atek, do you have anything this evening? Um, the only thing I have is personnel will be added, um, point C, to the closed meeting. Number 20. Okay. Anything else? I don't have anything else. Do we need a motion then to amend the agenda to add that? Or we should. I move we amend the agenda um, to include um, C under uh, 20 for personnel. Second. Move by Alderman Atex, second by Alderman Stark for the amendment to the agenda to add personnel under item 20. Any discussion? <clears throat> or call the roll. Atac? Aye. Star? Aye. Chanzit? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Fisher? Aye. O'Brien? Aye. Callahan? Aye. Homan? Aye. 
Mueller? Aye. Foderman? Aye. Cerrone? Aye. McFadden? Aye. Brown? Aye. Rosado? Aye. Motion is approved to 14 yes, no, no, is not absent. Moving to item number five, which is the presentation of the consent agenda, Alderman Atek. Uh, the consent agenda reads as follows. Accept and place on file Committee of the Whole Minutes for July 21st, August 4th, and August 11th, 2015. June Financials, Community Development Department's Quarterly Report, the Historic Preservation Commission Minutes for July 27th, 2015, the Tree Commission Minutes for February 4th and April 8th, 2015, approvals, um, for the August 28, 2015 payroll of $730,751.26, accounts payable check register $2,120,443.37, City Council minutes for June 22, July 6, July 20, August 3rd, and August 17, 2015. Resolution 15-113-R, accepting a plat dedicating a portion of Hoover Road, um, which was um, approved by the Committee of the Whole, uh, 12 to 0, on um, August 25, 2015. Resolution 15-114-R, approving First Amendment to the Master Services Agreement with Allen Peppa Architects, approved by the Committee of the Whole on August 25, 2015, with a vote of 12 to 0. Ordinance 15-40, declaring surplus property, approved by the Committee of the Whole on August 25, um, 2015, uh, unanimously. Um, Ordinance 15-38, annexing property at Carlisle Road and Hoover Wood Road, um, Hoover Road, excuse me, approved by the Committee of the Whole on August 25, 2015, unanimously. Ordinance 15-39, annexing property at 937 South Redant Road, again approved by the Committee of the Whole unanimously on August 25, 2015. And Resolution 15-90-R, authorizing purchase of a 2016 backyard mini derrick approved um, by the Committee of the Whole unanimously on August 25, 2016. I move we accept the consent agenda as presented. Second. Moved by Alderman Atek, second by Alderman McFadden for the approval of the consent agenda as presented. Any discussions? Clerk, call the roll. Atek? Aye. Stark? Aye. Chanzit? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Fisher? Aye. O'Brien? Aye. Callahan? Aye. Homan? Aye. Mueller? Aye. Bottoman? Aye. Cerrone? Aye. McFadden? Aye. Brown? Aye. Rosado? Aye. Consent agenda is approved 14 yes, no no's, none absent. Moving to item number six, which are matters from the public for items not on the agenda. Do we have anybody this evening? Okay, moving to item number seven, which is the Batavia Chamber of Commerce report. And we're very honored to have Holly Dykeman, the executive director here, to uh, chat with us. Good evening, Mayor. Good, made it. Good, good evening, Alderman. I have uh, just an announcement to give to you this evening. Every year, the Batavia Chamber of Commerce honors one of our members for being um, extra special in many ways, um, and we have been doing so under the name of the Donna Della Sassi Award since 2007. Donna Della Sassi is an extremely special person to our community and especially to the Batavia Chamber of Commerce because she really made the chamber what it is today. Um, she was um, and in her role as the executive director of the chamber was really involved in everything that had to do with business, trying to make every business succeed, whatever she could do from job fairs um, and just making the benefits of being a chamber member um, was was really in her soul and in her heart and she lived and breathed it every day and she still does so we're very fortunate to have Donna Della Sassi she will be attending our harvest celebration this year to help us honor our 2015 Donna Della Sassi award recipient so um, I just wanted to list off for you some of the previous award recipients so you will understand the meaning of this award not only by its name being the Donna Della Sassi award the 2007 winner of the Donna Del Sassi Award was Britta McKenna. 
2008, Kurt Miller. 2009, Jeannie Harms. 2010, Bob Hansen. 2011, Marsha Boyce. 2012, George Gladys. 2013, Scott Salvati. 2014, George Sheets. And our 2015 award recipient is Mr. Kevin Drendel. <laughs> So we are very proud to have Mr. Drendel in the uh, ranks as our newest uh, recipient of the Donna Della Sassi Award. And um, he has been, I've, I personally, through my work at BATV and also through the Batavia Chamber, have been the recipient of a lot of his um, advice as an attorney, not personally, thank you very much, but uh, for our nonprofit organizations. He has been very generous to many in our community, not only nonprofits, but other businesses that have looked for him for any advice. And because of his work, he has, uh, I believe, garnered this very prestigious award. So if any of you can join us, the Harvest Celebration, where we will be presenting uh, Kevin with his award, is this September 23rd. And it is from 5 until 8 p.m. at Marmion's Abbey Farm. So if you can join us, please let me know. We'll get you registered for the event. And as I mentioned all of, all of the time, as members of city council and staff of the city of Batavia, you are members of the Batavia Chamber of Commerce. So you're always welcome to join us at our events. So congratulations, Kevin Drendel, for the 2015 Donna Della Sassi Award. Can I say that uh I didn't know Holly was going to be here and <laughs> announce that, and that's not why I'm here. <laughs> when I saw your car in the parking lot, I'm like, yes. Well, congratulations so, on behalf of all of us for a well-deserved honor. So uh, you are a man who works many times behind the scenes and not in front of the scenes, and I know of many of the good and kind deeds you've done that you've never wanted any credit, nor have you gotten any. So this is most deserving. I couldn't think of a better person to honor, so. Agreed. Thank you. What time does that start at Marmion? It is from 5 until 8 p.m. on September 23rd at Abbey Farms. And many of our past recipients are typically there, so we use, do a little photo op and all that. So it's one of the, one of the happiest nights to be a part of the chamber, I can say that. I remember last year it was kind of cold out there. It was, but we moved it up to September this year. It was in October last year because it is harvest celebration. Um, and we picked a full moon for <laughs> our event this year. I, I called upon the meteorologists and the astronomers and, I don't know, Mother Nature, whoever else has a handle in that. But we'll have a full moon, and so it'll hopefully be a little bit warmer and a little bit brighter because it was a little dark last year. I might note to show the outreach of the Batavia Chamber, this event physically is being held inside the city of Aurora. Yes, it is, no. it is, I know, I know. <laughs> but don't you think harvest, when you think of Abbey Farms, you know, corn mazes and hay rides and we do s'mores and bonfires, so. We, as long we, as we get all those deuce pain chamber members down there at Kirk and Butterfield, yeah. and Marmion, I'm all for it. I'm with you, I'm with you. So thank you very much and please join us on the 23rd. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, item eight is a presentation by Family Counseling Service, Eric Ward. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and members of the City Council. My name is Dr. Eric Ward. I am the Executive Director at Family Counseling Service in Aurora. Um, I want to take the opportunity tonight to tell you a little bit about our organization. 90 years ago, a group of local citizens saw a problem in our community. With the country on the brink of the Great Depression, there were far too many people going hungry, far too many people unable to provide for their basic needs. So these citizens did what communities are supposed to do at, at times like this. They sat down and tried to figure out an answer to a simple question. What can we do to help? That conversation led to the formation of an organization that would eventually become Family Counseling Service of Aurora. In 1925, people were hurting because there was no money to provide for basic needs. So our agency got its start delivering food, clothing, and coal to what we called the needy poor. Our mission and our work has changed over the past 90 years. We no longer deliver wagons full of, of clothing and coal. We no longer deliver food to people. 
Instead, after World War II, when veterans were coming home with what would later become known as post-traumatic stress disorder, we hired the first professional mental health counselors in the area. When a newfangled thing called the credit card started ruining families' finances in the 70s, we added a consumer credit counseling program. And with the increase in the number of children growing up in single-parent households in 1980, we added a Big Brothers Big Sisters program. Our work has changed, but our goal has not. When we see a need in the community, we do our best to respond. We've added several bilingual therapists over the past several years to more closely reflect the demographic needs in the community. We've expanded our Big Brothers Big Sisters program to include not only our community-based mentoring program, but a school-based mentoring program as well. We provide a range of mental health services to individuals from ages three and up. Currently, our oldest client is 99 years young. We've added substance abuse treatment services and psychiatry as well to supplement our counseling work. We've quietly become the largest provider of child and adolescent mental health services in Southern Kane and Kendall counties. In all of our programs combined, we serve more than 4,000 families a year. The vast majority of people with mental health problems are people like you and me, people who work, who go to school, who have families. 99% of the people we see in our agency are people who are just struggling with some issue on a day-to-day -day basis. Unfortunately, the news is also full of stories about individuals with significant mental health issues who commit horrific acts of violence and destruction. While it's true that people with mental illness are statistically less likely to commit acts of violence, when they do, it's often newsworthy for all the wrong reasons. The truth is, most of these incidents are preventable. Whether trying to prevent a violent incident or simply trying to help a child with emotional struggles grow into a healthy and productive adult, early identification and treatment of mental health issues reduces the likelihood of violence and helps individuals get and stay stable. Youth mentoring services like Big Brothers Big Sisters guarantees the likelihood of a child staying in school, staying away from substance use, and keeping out of the legal system. The services we provide work. So why am I here tonight? I'll go back to our question that our founders asked back in 1925. How can we help? As servants in local government, you're in somewhat of a unique position. You serve by helping set policy for your residents, but you're also in close enough contact with the people in your community to know what their needs are. So how can you help? I'm not here to ask for financial support, although we probably wouldn't turn it down if you offered. I'm not here to tell you that we're going to close our doors because of the state's budget crisis. I am here to ask you to do two simple things. If you're not already, become familiar with the services that we offer at Family Counseling Service. Go to our website, www.aurorafcs.org. Learn about what we do. Call me so that you can stop into our organization and visit and meet the people who do the work. Know what resources we have to offer so that when one of your residents needs us, and make no mistake, many of them will, you know exactly when and how to direct them to us for help. Second, start having local and meaningful conversations about mental health. Change will not come via national policy. Change will start in neighborhoods like yours. No longer can we as a community afford to keep mental illness hidden under a shroud of shame and secrecy. Have these conversations and have them regularly. Use your positions to facilitate discussions between providers like us, your schools, your police departments, and your residents. Our agency started 90 years ago with a conversation. Imagine what could come of a conversation started by you in your own community. Again, thank you for giving me your valuable time. Thank you for your service to your community, and thank you for allowing us to make a difference in Batavia. Well, thank you on behalf of the City Council for coming up tonight and sharing your ideas. Do you have a website? Maybe you could give us an address and maybe a phone number. We do. We have a lot of people watching on TV and maybe somebody is out there is really needs your service right now and could give you a call too. So Absolutely. It's Family Counseling Service. We're at 70 South River Street in Aurora. Our website address is www.auroraFCS.org. Our phone number is 630-844-2662. All right. Anybody on the council have any comments or questions? Or you know what? Uh, if I may, I, my wife is in healthcare also, and and she would you 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 just said what what she says a great deal is that mental health. I mean, people would rather have cancer 
and have a mental health issue, which is very treatable. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I appreciate what you had to say. It, it is, unfortunately, there's little stigma attached with cancer, but the, the fear of being ostracized or, or being cast out when you're diagnosed with a mental illness is very real. And then, and there's cures available, so I mean. There's certainly treatment available. Um, like I said, the vast majority of people that struggle with mental health issues are people who have families, who, who work, and are productive members of, of society. Thank you. Marty? I work with one of the board, one of the board members, uh, Eric Mock, who is one of the attorneys that we use, and got to meet Dr. Ward uh, through him, and mm -hmm gotten to become friends and have learned a lot of the philosophy that goes on over at FCS and I am absolutely amazed at everything that they're doing and um, the the upbeatness with which they're trying to perform a very very difficult task um, maintaining the smile on the face in face of such adversity is uh, is amazing so I thank you for coming thank you so thank you again appreciate it so appreciate it. thank you We'll keep you in mind. Okay, moving to item number nine, we have a couple of appointments. Uh, first one is I'm um, asked for a confirmation of my appointment of Gregory Dio as a member of the Batavia Emergency Services and Disaster Agency. So move. Second. Second. Moved by Alderman Brown, second by Alderman Wolf. Clerk, call the roll. Brown? Aye. Rosado? Aye. Atak? Aye. Stark? Aye. Chanzit? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Fisher? O'Brien? Aye. Callahan? Aye. Homan? Aye. Mueller? Aye. Botterman? Aye. Cerrone? Aye. McFadden? Aye. That motion is approved. 14 yes, no no's, none absent. And as we have the chief at the podium, but as long as he's there and let me go ahead and do the other one, then we can get them both done and then we can have the chief speak and then I can swear him in. Uh, the next one would be the appointment of Christopher Guerin as a member of the Batavia Paid and Call Fire Department as a recruit. So moved. Second. Second. Moved by Brown, second by Wolf. Kirk, uh, call the roll. Brown? Aye. Rosado? Aye. Atec? Aye. Stark? Aye. Chanzit? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Fisher? Aye. O'Brien? Aye. Callahan? Aye. Homan? Aye. Mueller? Aye. Botterman? Aye. Cerrone? Aye. McFadden? Aye. Motion's approved. 14 <coughs> yes, no no's, none absent. Chief Dykey? Well, I think each one of them has a different swearing in, so I'll do one at a time. Uh, if Gregory could come up. Gregory lives in Elburn. He uh, works for Navistar. He's a diesel mechanic and he is energetic to uh, to work as a volunteer on the ESDA uh, emergency services. Christopher, if you can come up, please. Chris Guerin is a, uh, he's going to be a paid on call on, on our department. He already works on the Naperville Fire Department. He is a paramedic. He's an advanced firefighter. He lives in Elburn. And uh, he has a history, uh, a family history in the fire service. His dad was a lieutenant on the Glenside Fire Department.
position of the state of Illinois. And our place for discharge of duties. Take for discharge of duties. Of the position of paid on call recruit. Position of paid on call recruit. With the Batavia Fire Department. Batavia Fire Department. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Congratulations. Welcome on board. <laughs> Okay, the next thing is item 11, update on Prairie State. Mr. McGrath. Thanks, Mayor. Um, as you know, we've uh, posted a, uh, an updated narrative about the Prairie State project and added, uh, updated our FAQs from last year and also put some basic Prairie State documentation on our website. And on the website, we are available to respond to anybody's uh, Questions, any further questions that they have, and we are uh, working on putting more information on that website. Uh, we've been responding to some FOIAs regarding Prairie State, so it's uh, just increasing our understanding and familiarity with the documents over these many years. Um, as you also know, we've reviewed and we've made some recommendations about the release of some closed session minutes, uh, many of which were related to Prairie State during the uh, years when the project was uh, was under consideration, and I think that when the uh, City Council releases those, that'll give people a much better understanding of the, at least the beginnings of the project. Um, as you know, we told you we were contacted by the attorneys for the uh, class action suit, and we did uh, meet with uh, that attorney, and we have uh, two more meetings uh, uh, scheduled, and all I can say is that it's a very complicated issue, and uh, Gary and uh, Kevin and I and Peggy um, basically have a running conversation about the project or, or our situation um, every day. So that's really the update since last, since last week. I don't know if anybody has any questions. Any questions of Mr. McGrath? Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I, I'm sorry. And we do have a special meeting on the 28th, on Monday the 28th, for where the public is invited to uh, talk about the project. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving to item number 12, which is resolution 15-115R, facade improvement grant for 10 through 12 North River Street, uh, for O'Brien's. Uh, Alderman Brown. Thank you, Your Honor. This resolution was discussed at the last committee of the whole meeting last week, um, and it was approved by the committee to recommend approval to the city council. There was quite a lot of discussion on this, as it is very important to the city, uh, to the city council, and I think to the entire city to see our downtown maintained. Um, so this is a program that was established many years ago to aid, to, to provide some aid to the downtown uh, business owners and also some incentive to get them to maintain the buildings the way they need to be maintained. Um, they are historic buildings, they are in a historic district, and they're very, very expensive and very hard to maintain, as that was discussed also at the last committee meeting. So, as I said, there was a lot of discussion on it. Um, the committee did recommend approval, so I move for approval of Resolution 15-115-R. Second. Moved by Alvin Brown, second by Alvin Callahan for the approval of resolution 15-115-R, the facade grant for 10 through 12 North River Street O'Brien's building. Any discussion? Yes. Alvin McFadden? Yeah, I have a quick comment. Um, I didn't support this coming out of the cow. I probably won't support it tonight. Um, I feel like the purpose of the, the facade improvement grant and the TIF money is really to uh, do things that are make a, bu a building more marketable, make it uh, more enticing to a potential tenant to increase business downtown. And uh, this is, you know, this is really just a maintenance issue, which I think doesn't fall into that category and is just part of being a landlord. Um, I hear the comments about the, you know, the historic buildings and the importance of maintaining them. And you know, I think if we wanted to do something along the lines of a historic building preservation grant and figure out how to fund that and do it, that would probably be a worthy endeavor. But for me, for this type of project, um, I, I don't think I can support it. I agree with Drew. Anybody else? 
Okay, we have a motion and second on the floor for the approval of resolution 15-115-R, the facade grant for 110 through 12 North River Street, Kirk the Road. Brown? Aye. Rosado? Aye. Atac? Aye. Stark? Aye. Chanzit? Aye. Wool? Aye. Fisher? Aye. O'Brien? Aye. Callahan? Aye. Homan? Aye. Mueller? No. Botterman? Aye. Cerrone? No. McFadden? No. Okay, that vote is approved by a vote of 11 yes, 3 no. Okay, moving to 13, which is resolution 15-116-R, downtown signage grant for 13 East Wilson Street. Alderman Brown. Thank you, Your Honor. This also was discussed at the last meeting. There was quite a lot of discussion on this as well. Um, and over the years, a little history on this one, as, as just as the last one where you know, what's qualified? Is it maintenance? Is it a major improvement? Is it, you know, something that's here to stay? Um, the signage has always been an issue when it comes to a, a grant for the downtown. And probably three, four years ago, it was decided by the council at that time that that signage could be eligible. That's why it's in the program. That's why it's recommended for approval by staff. Um, and there's always been debate on it. Uh, so I think the last time we had the issue come up regarding a, a grant for a sign, the idea came up that there be a clawback provision put into it where if the building owner or the, the applicant does not remain in the city and does not continue to lease and operate out of that space for a certain amount of time, then they would be responsible to pay and obligated to pay that money back to the city. So at the time, that seemed to please the, the council, and that idea was brought up at the last um, committee meeting in regard to this application, and it seemed to please the committee at that time. Um, so it was recommended to the city council for approval tonight, and it was amended, or it has been changed, what we have in front of us tonight. It is the revised um, uh, resolution to reflect the clawback provision. So I move for approval of our, uh, resolution 15-116-R. Second. Moved by Alderman Brown, second by Alderman uh, Callahan for the approval of resolution 15-116-R, the downtown signage assistance grant for 13 East Wilson Street. I should mention, Your Honor, the total dollar amount that we're talking about for this is 50% of the cost of the sign. The sign is, this is a business that they also have a facility in St. Charles, so they want to keep with the same um, sign look, the same, um, I'm trying to think of the right word that we were talking about doing with the city emblem. Um, but they want to keep with the same look, so the uh, sign cost is going to be $464.62. That would be our share of the cost. So um, I just wanted to get that point out there. Albert Callahan? I know when Cheryl Dens, the owner of the business, was here at the Committee of the Whole, um, this is a business that our family uses, and um, I know that it does have the, even though they're a service business, there will have the spillover effect to the other neighbors in that, or other business in that neighborhood, because we, that is what we do. We spend our money when we go there and uh, while we're waiting for the kids to be done with their stuff. Um, and I also know that a good chunk of my money will probably go to pay her portion of the sign because we're it's a business that uh, is in need of this in this town Any other comments? Kirk called the roll. Brown? Aye. Rosado? Aye. Atac? Aye. Stark? Aye. Chanzit? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Fisher? Aye. O'Brien? Aye. Callahan? Aye. Homan? Aye. Mueller? Aye. Botterman? Aye. Cerrone? Aye. McFadden? Aye. is approved. Uh, 14 yes, no no is not absent. Okay, moving to item 14, which is resolution 15-117-R, renewal of health insurance consulting services agreement. Who's got this one? You want to talk about it, Wendy? Absolutely. Um, as you recall, on the uh, Committee of the Whole meeting on August 25th, we brought this consulting agreement to your attention and we had some dialogue regarding um, making, ensuring that the rates are competitive and that um, seeing that we've utilized the service since 2005, going back and making sure that we, in regards to approving this agreement, that we were where we needed to be. Since that meeting, um, I've had an opportunity to kind of take, well, take a look at our rates and our fees. And I took, it, took a look at it in three different areas. One, 
specifically being comparing it to other agencies in the area. Uh, additionally, looking at our fee structure compared to our closest communities. And then lastly, looking at um, industry standard in regards to um, the state of Illinois and where rate um, broker, broker fees are um, paid out of. So based on that, I looked at all that information. I apologize, I did get it too late. It took me a while to get some answers back from some of them. Um, but based on all of that information that I've collected, I feel very confident in, in letting you know um, that in each of the areas, we are as competitive. If not, our rates are even better in, than in some of our communities and some of what the agencies that had given me some uh, figures on. So I don't know if you have any other additional uh, questions. We do have some options. I had talked with Lundstrom in particular in regards to um, you know what, what are our options. Initially, we brought forward the two-year agreement with a 3% the first year and a zero the next year. Um, they also said they had some options of a two and two. If we go for a two-year agreement, of course, financially it makes sense to go for the zero and the th or the three and the zero because there is some cost savings there. Um, but if we're only looking at doing one year, which then would allow us to go out for an RFQ and do the full looking at for services, um, they said if we did year one, it would be three percent. Any thoughts about this? I think I'm supportive of a year just because it hasn't been done in a decade. And I believe, as I've made known, my concern is the 3% increase. I don't have anything to justify why specifically 3%, why not 4%, why not 25 I don't have anything before me that can just justify it, even though it's $1,200. Um, I don't see why we as the city and our taxpayers have to eat $1,200 if they haven't made the business case. Um, you know, a business owner coming to, a, um, as a vendor, going before any business and saying, we're raising our cost of service this year 3%, that business owner is going to say, why? And if they say, well, it's nominal, <coughs> it, I'm not going to do business that way. So I can't support the, um, the three percent raise, I will support them for being here for a um, for at least doing it another year until you can do the RFQ. Um, but if you have any reasons why, um, what their rationale for the three percent, I would definitely be willing to hear that. I mean, outside of the services that they provide, and it's a, they consider it a yearly increase. I'll be honest; I don't necessarily have any what you'd say really concrete business outside of. They say it's common as far as from year to year to look at rates and the cost of, of doing business, and they say it's a 3% increase. And can you go over what the rate increases have been over the last five years? Sure. Sure, I have those here. Um, so in 2004, or I'm sorry, 2014 it was 3%, in 2013 it was 3 and then in the, in the years 2012, 10, and 9 it was 0. Any other thoughts? I just know it's been I know it's been called for in at the uh, the contract time of 2013, 2011, and 2010 that this go out to an RFQ by uh, Alderman McFadden, uh, Alderman uh, Vic Dietz, and Alderman Stark. Um, well, I'll make a motion that we approve Resolution 15-117-R, the Renewal of Health Insurance Consulting Services Agreement, as presented. Which option? Um, staff recommends for the renewal, let's see, 3% um, this year and 0% next year, the original recommendation. Okay, we have a motion and second for the approval of the renewal of the uh, Health Insurance Consulting Services Agreement with the 3% option this year and a 0% option next year. Is that any discussion further on the motion? Alderman one? one quick question. If we do approve that as, as it's written, I'm a little confused. It said in there, I believe, that either one of us could opt out of that second year, correct? correct. So basically what we're saying is we're going to take 3% this year, we're going to go with a second option for 0% the following year. 
But if we go out for an RFQ and we don't want that second year at zero percent, we are we can walk away, correct? Right. As the contract reads, there's a time frame, and I don't know it off the top of my head, but w when we're nearing that second year, if we wish to um, not renew, we would just notify them, and then we would move forward. Okay. Yeah, we you. absolutely have the option to. Thank you. You know, I, I just make the comment. Uh, as you know, I get to move around the region quite a bit with my CMAP uh, responsibilities and. Rather recently, I've had the opportunity to talk to a number of mayors, and one of the high-profile items on most people's list of concerns is renewal of insurance and consulting of what's going on there. And there's, I'll describe it as a lot of games being played now by insurance companies and people showing up on the doorstep offering cities things that at the end of the day they probably can't deliver. In, in, you know, I really admire Wendy for stepping forward and offering to put this together for us because this is a ver becoming a very problematic area for the cities to do something. And on, on this particular situation, I think we got some folks here that will keep us on the straight and narrow and look out for our best interests because this is a, a game where there's a lot of people out there playing in it or want to play in it and they think there's a lot of money to be made and a lot of representations are being made that aren't being fulfilled. And I think. What she's trying to do here is keep us right on the point, on the mark, in the game, and not getting swayed down the road in some bad direction. So I appreciate what she's trying to do here. I don't know, Brian. You know, when, when this came up uh, the last, the, the Cal meeting, I, I reached out to a few uh, aldermen also and council members, and I had concerns because, you know, what, what Marty had said and what uh, Drew had said at the last meeting made a lot of sense. And then just waiting for you to bring back the information. And then that was my main concern, is that we were at least in line with, with the other communities, with the other agencies. And then you went that, that extra third step. So I mean, I'm going to support this, because what we've also been told is that we, we have a good working relationship with Lundstrom. And, and when things were real tough in 2008, 2009, 2010, they didn't increase anything. They, they, they stayed within their, 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 their costs. And, uh, and, and as the mayor says, you know, insurance is a, is a funny business. I don't know much about it, but it just seems like it's real funny whenever I deal with insurance companies. I always end up with the short end of the stick. And so uh, I, I just think it's, uh, we, have, we have a company that we, we, uh, we can trust. We have a good working relationship with them, with good communication. My own my concerns were were, were, were relieved with, with your email today, and so I'm going to support it. So thank you. Other comments? Kirk, call the roll. ATAC? Aye. Star? Aye. Chansett? Aye. Wool? Aye. Fisher? Aye. O'Brien? Aye. Callahan? No. Homan? Aye. Mueller? Aye. Botterman? No. Cerrone? Aye. McFadden? No. Brown? Aye. Rosado? No. So that one's approved by a vote of 10 yes, 4 no. Thank you. Thank you. All right, moving to item number 15, which is approval of a Class F liquor license for Water Street Studios for a gallery opening on September 18th, 2015. Okay. Um, Chiefs, the police department conducted an investigation uh, and background check to determine whether the Corporation Batavia Artists Association, which would be hosting this event at Water Street, um, were suitable to receive this one day temporary Class F liquor license, and they determined that they were suitable. Um, this is for a special gallery opening for Friday, September 18th, uh, 2015. And so um, I recommend that we grant the liquor license application to Batavia Artists Association for the Water Street Studios gallery opening. And I move so. Second. Moved by Alderman uh, Atex, second by Alderman McFadden for approval of Class F for the Water Street Studios gallery opening. Any discussion? Alderman, or Chief Shira? They, they were also asking that the liquor license be waived. Oh, thank you. <coughs> so you want to include that as part and of the motion? I, um, and I move that we waive the liquor license. Um, second, second. Kirk. All right. Any further discussion? Kirk, call the roll. ATAC? Aye. Stark? Aye. Chansett? Aye. Wool? 
Aye. Fisher? Aye. O'Brien? Aye. Callahan? Aye. Homan? Aye. Mueller? Aye. Potterman? Aye. Cerrone? Aye. McFadden? Aye. Brown? Aye. Rosado? Aye. Motion is approved 14 yes, no no's, and an absent. Moving to 16, the administrator's report. Mr. McGrath. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, the Houston Street project is uh, going uh, very smoothly. I think everybody recognizes that we're very lucky with the uh, weather that's been good until today, but I think they were even out working today. Um, if uh, things go uh, smoothly or continue to go smoothly, they'll be starting to pour concrete next week. I believe that's for the planters or foundations for the planters and the uh, planting areas. Um, once again, we're please uh, asking people to stay off the construction area. We still have um, particularly people on bicycles just riding right through there and uh, I just hate to see um, anybody seriously hurt because there is a lot of uh, there's a lot of uh, ditches and holes and equipment and materials laying around so uh, the Walgreens uh, tax increment financing project is moving along as well um, I think the owners and the builder have uh, both done a really nice job in protecting access I think that um, I use that center often and other people that I know have and really have experienced little to no uh, problems in, in meandering through the uh, center and getting access to the store. So I, I, I'm sure there's some, um, you know, some negative impacts, but I think they've done a really nice job um, thus far and I think they're moving ahead very quickly. All the, uh, as you can see, they're pouring in the, uh, the foundations now um, for the walls. So. Um, we've been working with PACE. PACE is uh, going to change one of its uh, bus routes. They have, um, I believe it's Route 802. It basically comes up um, from Aurora, uh, comes through town on Batavia Avenue, and goes up to the train station and uh, to some other areas. Starting in October, um, every other uh, bus is going to uh, come, at the, uh, come to the corner of Batavia Avenue and Main Street, and instead of moving ahead, they're going to be turning westbound and going to uh, Main Street and Randall Road, then going up uh, Randall Road North uh, to hit some other locations. Um, they have not absolutely finalized the map, nor have they finalized the time schedule, um, but they said as soon as they have it finalized, they'll give it to us and we'll put it out in our e-blast as well as put it on our website. Now, one of the, uh, uh, one of the impacts of that is that uh, Pace has also changed their policies, and instead of the bus stops being um, in front of um, or just just in front of a stoplight, now they prefer to let the bus get through the intersection and then pull off uh, um, for the bus stop. So, on Batavia Avenue, uh, just north of um, Main Street, there are three or four. Or there's four parking spaces next to the Chase Bank that are rarely used and we're looking at removing two of those and, and uh, cutting out the striping so that that can use be used temporarily as a, a bus stop and I say temporarily because the Main Street project envisions uh, turn lanes uh, that will uh, widen the street somewhat and take away that parking lane and at that point uh, Pace will either decide to move a, a bus stop further north or just may stop in a traffic lane and uh, as many buses do and use that one. On the other hand, the buses that will turn left uh, and go west on Main Street, we have, uh, there is parking on uh, the north side of Main Street and we're looking at uh, a parking area there to, um, to set aside as a bus stop um, a little west of the uh, commercial uh, buildings that are there, probably um, a little west of the alley that goes into this, the buildings uh, along Batavia Avenue. So we'll get that out to everybody and give it some publicity. And I, I guess there's a trade off to losing a couple of uh, parking spaces, but I, that's what mass transit really is all about. So I think that's a good, good sign. Um, we still get some questions about the uh, situation at Siemens, and uh, Tom, uh, excuse me, Scott has been in touch with uh, the uh, new representative there who continues to be very responsive uh, to Scott. I think I uh, talked last time about the fact that even though there is no uh, danger or issues with, say, dust or something uh, rising from the surface because the contaminated uh, soils have been covered over with clean soils, they are going to spray 
a protectant, as, as it were, um, over the site uh, so that there, so there won't be any uh, dust. On the other hand, they have also gone out and they've uh, done some uh, leaching tests to uh, make sure that none of the uh, uh, and none of the um, materials that are inside their, their contaminants can uh, drift off through the soil. And they've done those tests, and there's nothing uh, leaching from that area. They put up silt fences, and I think you've seen they've already um, they've um, put in a drainage ditch to keep any uh, storm water water runoff on the property. So um, I don't, really don't think there's anything to be worried about at the moment for anyone in the neighborhood um, whatsoever. Um, we will get back to you as soon as they, uh, as IPA um, approves their remedial action plan and we'll get that out to everybody. I don't expect that to, to happen for at least a couple of three or four months with the IPA. Um, the brush uh, program is starting to tail off. The east side, the next pickup is September 14th, followed by October 12th, and then the wrap up on November 30th after Thanksgiving weekend. For the west side, September 21st, October 19th, and then again the November 30th wrap up. Please try to have your brush out on Monday morning uh, so that our contractor can get it all done in one fell swoop. It's still not too late to participate in the fall 50-50 Parkway Tree Program. The details are online on the front page of the website. Um, I want to remind people that also on the front page of the website, in the far right hand, upper right-hand corner, they can sign up for our e-news, which is a weekly email uh, directly to you about events in the city, uh, especially relating to road projects and some other construction. And um, that will continue to be the, uh, the case when we switch over to our new website. Um, the art stop, the bids are coming in tomorrow. The parking lot or the expansion of the parking lot, the art stop, the bids uh, will be open tomorrow and brought to Cow uh, next Tuesday. And uh, the work will be done this season is what we've been told. Um, there was an article in the local paper last week about uh, that kind of implied that Aldi that it was moving its corporate headquarters uh, down to Aurora, and it, it, the article was it was hard to really tell what was going on. So I just wanted to clarify the fact that Aldi is going under such explosive growth uh, that they literally had to lease another building uh, to uh, house its IT department. Uh, they have no intention of moving from their uh, corporate campus here. And in fact, what's going on is they're engaged in some uh, master planning of the entire campus. Uh, so they, they, they decide exactly what it is they're going to do with the future. And um, I assume that we're going to see that IT department come back here. In the meantime, they're, they've been in and are working with community development to uh, put in some temporary parking uh, because they've just got more people coming than uh, with the new building than they uh, had planned for. So uh, I think it's all good on the, the Aldi front. We've been, uh, I think we were resolving some issues. We had some land acquisition issues, which I may have mentioned regarding the Deer Path uh, Main Street intersection and the Deer Path Road Bridge. I think we've been uh, re resolving uh, that issue along with some trail issues in Tanglewood Unit 5. And, we're pleased that both the developer and the uh, homeowners association have been very cooperative uh, in working through the issues uh, with that. And lastly, we received notice today that a contract was let by IDOT uh, for installation of flashing lights at the uh, solar powered flashing lights at the bike trail as it crosses Redant Road, Hart Road, and Wagner Roads. The work is to start this October and finish up sometime in 2016, I guess weather permitting. So um, that's all I have. Any questions of Mr. McGrath tonight? Hello, Brian. You know, I, uh, I guess I'm a little concerned when you, you talked about Houston Street and, and we're asking people to not walk on the site. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think that, I, th I think we owe it to to the, the, the people, to, to the residents of our city, to, to make sure people don't walk on the site. To, you know, financially, we have responsibility that no one gets injured, and, and ethically, we have a responsibility to, to the residents or anyone walking through our downtown that they don't walk through the site. Just having signs up, I don't believe is good enough. I believe we should have some sort of fencing to keep people from walking between the Type 3 barricades. I mean, as, as I walk around, I just, I see it. I, I saw a woman 
riding a bike down the middle. It's like, you know, if they fall into a ditch, they're, they're going to be severely injured. And I, I think we need to get with our construction manager and tell him, seal the this, seal this site off. I mean, uh, the costs are not that great. If they need to use whatever kind of fencing, I believe that's that's what we should look, be looking into. Uh, I'll, I'll certainly pass it on to Scott Haynes, who's running the project. But, you know, to be honest with you, uh, that's a tough one. I mean, people are responsible for themselves. And I just, um, I had to kind of raise my voice to some people who had to be in their 50s who just coasted right down the middle of it uh, on their bicycles. And, and I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if a fence is going to do anything, Mike. Now, I did, we did talk to Scott because they did have some issues about them not um, fencing it off completely when they leave at night. I think that's being done, but I will, I'll talk to Gary and Scott and see to make sure because um, it's right here, I think, where most of it's happening. Right. I don't think it's from that end trying to get through. Yeah, I, I saw it up on, on Batavia Avenue. Yeah. And I thought, that's not good. <laughs> yeah, I saw somebody so, driving I mean, on we, Sunday right up the middle of the street. So we, we have to protect people from themselves. And I know it's a tough one, but it's, it's not that costly either. Okay, I'll, so, ra I'll raise the issue and see. I mean, I hope something is done about yeah. it. Other than raising the issue, we, we, we take care of it. Any other questions of Mr. McGrath or Mr. McFadden? I uh, mentioned the new website. Any update on when? It's this, uh, it's tomorrow. Ah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. Mm -hmm. cool. I still have to write, write the welcome. I, as you know, I was gone. <laughs> oh, so it's your fault. That's my fault. I, I don't blame anybody else. I'm, I'm the guy that. I'm, I'm trying to get that done today or tonight so that Howard can have it. He sent me a reminder this afternoon that we need to get that complete. So I'm the, I'm the bad guy here. It's probably going to it's probably going to take a couple of weeks to really flow because for the past several weeks everybody's had to um, put things uh, put in content on the old website and the new website. So it's been kind of crazy, but. We're real excited about it. Okay, thanks. Okay, uh, committee reports. Alderman Brown, community development. Thank you, Your Honor. A few meetings to announce tomorrow, not tomorrow night. We're not, we are not gonna have a cow meeting this week due to the fact that we had a holiday this week. Uh, plan commission has also been canceled for tomorrow evening. The historic preservation is scheduled for next Monday, the 14th at 5.30. Our next call meeting will be September 15th at 7.30. A few items on this uh, community development agenda. The first one is Ordinance 15-42 for a variance on Church Street. I encourage everybody to take an opportunity and drive by with your packet to familiarize yourself with the project. It's always good when you start talking about variances to actually get out and see what it is that they're looking to do. And then we're having Ordinance 15-43, amending the tax zoning code. Ordinance 15-41, amending the comprehensive plan. And here's an interesting one. Discussion on chickens on non-residential property. That ought to be a good one. I'm not sure what that's about. So that's what we have coming up. Uh, the next plan commission is scheduled for September 16th at 7.30. And I did, at the last COW meeting, we skipped right over the community development quarterly report that came out. I, I said that I wanted to talk about it briefly at the council meeting, so I'm going to. Um, I just wanted to make mention that it, this is a report that started coming out roughly a year, a year and a half ago, where community development started putting it out. Engineering actually was putting one out at that time, and then we've had quite a few changes in engineering, so hopefully that'll start back up again. But it is real interesting and, and informative to kind of keep everybody abreast as everything that the community development is working on through Scott Bluing's uh, direction. Um, there's many, there's two and a half pages, three pages of the projects that they've been working on through the second quarter. And then I did want to mention specifically some of the statistics uh, the building department has been seeing go through their doors. In the first two quarters of the year, permits have been 938 for 2015 as compared to 481 in 2014. So roughly double the amount of permits in, in the same amount of time a year ago. Construction costs for the same period 
has been $11,356,171 of private money invested in the community as compared to $8,134,257 same time period last year. The fees, interesting enough, have gone down. The fees that were collected were 124,716 as compared to 136,763. Now here's another one, inspections. The inspections for the first two quarters of the year were 1,428 inspections, 1,428 for 2015 as compared to 1,062 inspections for the same time last year. So as you can see, the Community Development Department and the Building Department are very busy in there and that's a very good thing to see. Uh, some of the more notable things as far as cost-wise were the Sam's Club remodel of $1.8 million. Uh, Corey Stone Pond had two additional building permits issued over there for the building right across the pond here. Uh, the Siemens demolition, as Bill talked about, the completion of the Walgreens plan review and, and issuance of a permit, Batavia Library permit, uh, Tanglewood Unit 5, as we all know, that's the new subdivision out in Drew's Ward. <laughs> where, where, five permits, where five permits were issued so far this year, up, up through the first two quarter, to, to, uh, up through the first half of the year. And then the Speedway plans had uh, gone through their complete review and the permit has been issued on that. So they are very busy. Uh, Rhonda, who is our code enforcement um, director, compliance officer, there's a few of the items she's been working on. I hope I'm not boring anybody. But um, she had 406 code enforcement inspections, 310 grass compliance, 31 garbage and open storage, 16 exterior property maintenance, 10 inoperable and unlicensed vehicles, 12 landlord complaints, 9 illegal signage, 9 stop work orders, six animal complaints, two of which were chicken. We'll have to see what that's all about when we're talking about chicken in a non-residential area. Um, three otherwise complaints, which, which noted in here were noise, watering, and an ROW right away complaint. Four adjudication cases, one for sign, one for outdoor storage, two for exterior property maintenance, two circuit court cases, then we had, uh, she pulled up 593 illegal temporary signs. We had some hoarding issues that had to be dealt with. 32 foreclosed and abandoned properties that she needed to deal with, whether it be for weed abatement or grass complaints or what have you. Two exterior property cleanup and foreclosure, abandoned property issues. Um, the list goes on and on. I won't, I won't keep going, but as you can see, it's, it's community development department is very busy and um, I worry quite honestly that they're understaffed and or will be understaffed as we get busier and and we every time we create another ordinance that requires more inspections as right as we might think it is for whatever reason to protect our citizens to help our citizens to make sure that they're getting the services they require that's imposing more re required work on the building department that we have so um, just wanted to get that out here for the report and let everybody know that our, our staff is very busy. That's all I have, Your Honor. All right, uh, Government Services, Alderman Atek. Well, the next Government Services topic I see is at the Committee of the Whole on September 29th when we're going to be discussing the strategic plan. Okay. That is it. Uh, City Services, Alderman Wolf. Uh, I don't have anything on the next two cow meetings, so. Let's be here for the rest of the discussions. Okay. Public Utilities, Alderman O'Brien. Uh, Mayor, we have uh, on September 15th, the Cal, we have a discussion for offers, offers and bids for purpose of purpose for purchase, excuse me, of city-owned property at Danforth and Godfield. We have an electric rate review study and an update on Prairie State. On September 22nd, at the Committee of the Whole, we have an update on Prairie State. We have an executive session for existing and or imminent litigation, purchase and or sale of electric power. And on the uh, September 28th, we have a meeting also, uh, it's a cow meeting, it's a Monday night, Committee of the Whole regarding Prairie State, and that's gonna be uh, public invited for comments, I believe. Okay. 
Anybody on the council have any other business? Alderman O'Callaghan? <laughs> <laughs> we dropped that on the way over. <laughs> the O. Oh. <laughs> um, did I say, I, I thought I said Alderman Callahan. I didn't say, did I say O'Callaghan? O'Callaghan. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> didn't know which, I did it. Going, going for the stereo, stereo. Which going for the stereo. Yeah. Exactly. Um, I just want to talk briefly about um, law enforcement has always been a tough career and I can't remember a time where it's been more challenging than of late. Um, I wanted to thank the chief and his um, and his guys for and women for representing up at Lieutenant Glinowitz's uh, funeral this weekend. I know Commander Perez uh, represented us in the funeral procession and I know um, uh, I thank Officer Nalen Wegg for taking his son up there uh, to see it firsthand. Um, having attended them, and apart from a funeral of a child, there is nothing um, more heart-wrenching and emotional than a law enforcement or firefighter funeral. Um, with that in mind, I know tomorrow night at 7 p.m. at the Peg, Bo Peg Bond Center, uh, some local churches and community organizations are holding a community get-together to show their support of law enforcement in the community. Um, hopefully we will turn out on that. I know this community would support wholeheartedly if one of our officers or firefighters were injured or killed in the line of duty, but we don't need to wait until they're dead to show their appreciation. So I would ask everybody to please consider showing up tomorrow night at seven at the Peg Bond Center. I also know there are neighborhoods in, in our community that are currently uh, putting blue ribbons around their trees. Um, I know Alderman, uh, former Alderman uh, Janet Jungles up in the third ward has some on her street. There are some on the uh, east side and west side. So that's not a bad thing to get behind also to show our guys and women as they're driving around the neighborhoods to show your support. Thank you. Thank you. Unfortunately, I got to tell you, I'm not going to be able to be there tomorrow night. It's the same moment as the Pace Bus Board meeting that we've got a number of Kane County issues before, and I'm the Kane County representative, so I'll probably still be at the bus board at 7 o'clock. Otherwise, I would be there as quick as I could, but I don't think I'll be able to make the 7 o'clock time. We'll make sure that we show up in your state. Thank you. Alderman Wolf. A um, couple things on the, the BATV front that I wanted to bring up tonight. Um, the football season has started and we are broadcasting live from every home game and every away game. And I'd like to invite everybody out to the Bulldog Stadium next Friday night, not this Friday night, but next Friday night. Um, they'll be doing the uh, Hall of Honor recipients and there's also a special presentation. Ken Anderson will be there with the uh, NFL Golden Football that's given to everybody that played in the Super Bowl. So he'll be there. To, I think that's being donated to the high school, as long as, as well as everybody that's in the uh, inaugural class and the Hall of Honor will, should be there. Well, everybody that's alive that should be there. So it should be a very interesting night. It's also homecoming, which is very early this year. Uh, so I think that's next Wednesday is the parade. So we're going to have a lot of fun. And I also wanted to mention that uh, last Saturday night we had an event for BATV down at the. Uh, um, Kiss the Sky had a concert down there and also debuted a new show that the ATV has out called Our Underground. Um, it's, I'll describe it as an MTV behind the music type show um, that will be a spotlight on local artists both in the music world and in the art world so there's a lot to cover. Um, it's really a very well done, very interesting show. Uh, the first one is on Noah Gabriel and that's available online. You can get that through the BATV website and then it'll also be broadcast starting tomorrow at 5 p.m. So another new show from BATV. Thank you. Thank you, anybody else? Okay, moving to 19, the mayor's report. I gotta just I wanna take a couple of minutes and tell you about my day. Uh, as you all know, I do a lot with the Chicago Metropolitan Agency for planning and the Metropolitan Mayor's Caucus. And I continue to serve as the chairman of the uh, CMAP uh, Council of Mayors and then as a result of that I guess I was invited today to come into Chicago over their offices at Willis Tower because they were hosting a special group of international visitors and what they had was is a delegation of folks from Australia who were all city officials from the various provinces in Australia 
and they had come to Chicago, I think it was for the American Public Works Convention, which was going on, and then they stayed for a couple of days after to specifically tour Chicago and get some insights, and one of the things that they had on their agenda was to meet with some local officials about comparing notes, I guess I would describe it, at least that was what I thought we were gonna do. So anyway, I get in there and this nice group of folks came and they couldn't have been any nicer and we ended up having almost a three hour meeting with them. And uh, it was uh, Dave Bennett, who was the executive director of the Metropolitan Mayor's Caucus and Joe Zabo, who is the executive director of the Chicago Metropolitan Agency for Planning and myself in my role as chairman of the CMAP Council of Mayors. And so we talked about a whole bunch of stuff and in Australia right now there is a massive push by the federal government to consolidate governments. And so they're telling like four cities, you're all gonna become one city. And then in addition to that, they're telling them that your tax rate is going to be, they, the federal government is setting their tax rate and they're saying you can't tax beyond this. And it was a very complex conversation to listen to, but they're trying to get through it. And in some instances they say it's working, others it isn't. Uh, the federal government, I guess, can give you permission to unconsolidate, and they've done it at least once already in some circumstances that happened out there. But as we got into things, they were very interested in talking to, as they found out I was, older communities, because in Australia, many of their towns, their sewer and water is getting to be 100 years of age. And I said, hey, I got that problem. Our, our water system in the older parts of Batavia was put in in 1893, and our sanitary sewer was originally put in in 1905, and we combined the sanitary sewer and the stormwater in parts of our town, and you know these pipes are now well over 100 years of age, and they're falling apart and breaking, and we're having to redo things. And one of the things we're doing is, is that we rebuild it specifically in the older parts of the downtown. We take out everything and put in all new and we put in much bigger pipes so we can plan for the future, et cetera, et cetera. Well, then we got to kind of the surprise and the, the gentleman who was traveling with them as the host says to these folks, well, this is the guy, and he points at me, he's the guy that you've all been asking about who's got the woonoof in his town. And I'm like, yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so, believe it or not, several of these folks in doing research in the United States of America, they're interested in wounds. And they had found out, I guess we must have this advertised in the, online at various points, that Batavia, Illinois has a wound. So I guess I was a requested speaker at this thing, and I didn't even know I was supposed to. So I said, well, what is this about the wound? And they said, well, you're, ahead of, you're pioneering a new idea here. And I said, we are? And they said, yes, that's, that's what we're all going for. That's the use of a street for more than a street. And in your town, you, you've got a bike trail in, in part of the Woonoof, and you've got bike trails on both sides of your town, and you've got river walks built next to it, and you've, you've got it centrally located in your downtown. These people knew more about Batavia than I almost did. I mean, they were really, into this Wunu thing, but they were really praising the idea that, and what, I said, well, what do you mean by, well, you can do all these events on this thing, because you can have concerts, you can have car shows, you can have farmer's markets, you can do retail, you can do entertainment, you can do church services, you can do celebrations, you can do parties, and in your town, you've even built a special bridge that you can't drive cars on that will connect you know, one side of your downtown with the other, and it looks like you're even, and they even seem to know about Houston Street, that you're rebuilding that so that you can do stuff there. And, and so, can you send me pictures? And so I said, well, why don't you send me your request? So I handed out my, I had, fortunately I had a pocket full of business cards with the city of Batavia, so I gave away my city business cards to all these folks. And they assured me that they're gonna be contacting me asking for copies of pictures and diagrams and information about what we're doing in downtown Batavia because in Australia they found out about us and they're very interested to know what this is all about because this is an idea that they think they'd like to borrow from us or steal from us as one said and bring it to their country and do it because it looks like this is the way you, you create a sense of community, you bring the town together, 
you you can do all kinds of stuff on these streets and they don't have curbs where you're impeding the handicapped and people are stumbling and you don't have all that you got street furniture for people to sit on and it's a friendly place and there's no end to what you can maybe do with a woonoof in your town so they are they were very interested because as near as they could tell batavia was the only one around here with a woonoof Alderman Brown, you follow Woonoofs. Do you know of anybody else that's... Well, you We're number know. five on the Google search. If you just type Woonoof into there, it comes up. The fifth thing is Batavia. Well, I mean, it, it just shows you the wonders of the computer because these guys from Australia yeah. all knew about that's... Batavia, Illinois, and this Woonoof. And this was, uh, I mean, I, I was almost like celebrity with these folks <laughs> about because I was the mayor of the town with the Woonoof. And they were really into this. Well, that... that uh, that evening we went downtown. To, I think it was the Revolution Active Transportation Alliance. Yeah. Transportation Alliance. I spoke to some people there, and they said that that what we've done here in Batavia is, is known throughout the, the country, and, and people are looking to copy that. I mean, it's 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 making all these transportation, you know, periodicals and things. That it it's a big thing, and so. Well, they were, these guys were extremely complimentary about how this thing had been put together, and I'm not sure this was planned this way, but it was put together to integrate bicycle trails into it, and that they knew that we had bicycle trails coming across the river at it from the west, you can come at it from the north, from the south, and it's, it's, that's there, and that's a part of this thing, and so we were just getting patted on the back like you wouldn't believe. And I, I wish all the rest of you could have been there, especially those of us who have taken a lot of flack about some of people don't like what we did here. But, you know, when we literally have taken this thing out of the country and the people from Australia are coming over here asking questions, and, I, you know, I said, well, if you guys were really wanting to come out and see it, call me tomorrow and I'll, I'll be around for most of the day. I don't know if they will, but, they, you know, they were, I said, if you want, I can take some pictures and send them to you if you want to know more about it. So I just thought that was uh, an interesting sidebar to have. And you know, the more I talked to, to different people, I was talking to the gentleman uh, uh, who has been involved in some of the events that have been over there, the, the uh, car shows and you know, the, the, some of the other things we've talked about doing there. And people say that you know, this is really an interesting place to do something like this because it, it, it has the appearances of being so friendly. And the whole idea, you know, tomorrow we're going to look at expanding the parking lot there. Uh, when I was on my trip in Vermont last week in upstate New York, I was in a couple of towns, and I have some photos I will show you at a subsequent meeting of some nice downtown living units that have been built in some of the older towns in upstate New York of six, seven stories of very successful you know, compacted, you know, apartment slash condo living units, and, and that's a real common thing. And the, you know, the idea that, uh, and so then they, they, the, the guys said to me today, do you have room to expand this thing in the future? Because you're going to need to do that. And I said, well, you know, it's interesting you should ask that, because if you start at River Street at our infamous arch that some people like and some people don't like, and you go north, the entire River Street corridor up there has one great advantage that, that the whole west side of it has open what can be redeveloped river frontage for about 10 blocks. You know, there's things that could happen and you could buy some properties, could change and you could really open that up. So that's one thing. But it's been set up so that if somebody wanted to take the Woonoof and go into the next block with it, you could do that. If you wanted to go two or three blocks with it, you could do that if we had redevelopment opportunities presented to us that people wanted to do it. And they said, well, we think you've set yourself up for a real winning thing and you're, you're kind of pioneering the concept here in America. So these are people who don't even live in this country that are watching this. So I just wanted to share that with everybody that I came home kind of with my head swelling that I thought, hey, we really did something that some people have noticed here and it's not even in this country. So I'm feeling good about that. Alderman Callahan? And Gaetano's had a wedding out right. there right. this weekend. Talk about a brand new use that I don't think has ever been done in town. <laughs> yeah, well, Chief Shira and I uh, had some conversations about it, and I have to take full responsibility for making the decision that we let the wedding party be there because 
they kind of exceeded their ground space there, but given the context of what the street was already closed and the guy was helping sponsor the car show and we're trying to be friendly here and do new and creative and wondrous things. So I can promise you if we have any more weddings in the middle of River Street, you guys are gonna vote on it. <laughs> I heard a lot of good comments about that. I am too, but I you know, it was fine and it did not work to be a problem and the police department really stepped up and handled everything quite well and so it, it was not but you know it's just you know we're, we're kind of pioneering new prop new ideas here and when you do that you never know what you're going to get or what somebody's going to hit you with so don't be surprised for for the, <coughs> the next thing you see i was earlier in the <coughs> summer I, I was away for a weekend and i was up and not very far away i was up in the northwest corner of winnebago county in this little town called durand now that's it's, it's, it's the same county Rockford's in, but it's the farthest county in the northwest corner. And I get up there on a Friday night, and there's about, a, I don't know, 800 people standing in the middle of this little downtown. And so I get out of the car, and I walk around there, and I'm seeing what's going on, and here's all these people with a dog on the leash. And so the next thing I know, the PA kicks open, and they said, we're about to have the dog talent show. And so, all of a sudden, here's all these people standing in line with their dogs. And they had a panel of judges in this town. And come to find out, I asked a lot of questions. Who were these judges? Well, there was a guy that owned the dog training school. And there was a guy that owned the dog obedience school in Winnebago County. And another one owned a dog or kennel. And another one was a pet store owner. And so they were the judges of this talent show. And they had all these people with their dogs, and these people were really proud of their dogs. All the dogs did talent, and some of them rolled over, and some of them jumped over barrels, and some of them stood up and barked and acted like they were talking to you. So the, the one that ends up winning, it was, I don't, I'm not into my dog, so I don't know what variety it was, but this gal had this dog, and there was this panel of judges sitting there, and she says, I think his name was Raul. Raul wants to thank each one of you judges here. And so the dog comes up and he puts his two front paws on, on the judge's desk and he raises his paw up and he's like this. And so she says, give Raul a high five. And so the judge, first judge, and the dog comes back down and he comes back over to the next judge and he goes up on the table, give Raul a five. And he gave all five of the judges a high five. And then Raul walked off, and Raul won the contest. <laughs> so I came. I took some pictures of that one, and I came back, and I came to, to Jamie and Holly, and I said, hey, I got a new idea for some event in downtown Batavia. We'll have a dog talent contest. Now, I think these two have grabbed this, and I think we're going with this idea. At some point, we're going to have the dog talent contest here. So be ready. And I'll take the blame for that too, because I stole it from Duran. But I mean, it was there. <laughs> All right, uh, I've talked enough. Uh, we'll move to item 20, which is a closed session for the uh, item A, the existing and imminent litigation, sale and purchase of property, and a no, a no decision. We're going to have a decision uh, discussion on personnel. And I don't anticipate any action under the personnel. Uh, do we anticipate any under sale of property or the existing and imminent domain litigation? Is it just all advisory? No. Okay. I'd entertain a motion. Do we enter executive session? So moved. Second. Moved by Alderman Brown, second by Alderman O'Brien. Call the roll. Brown? Aye. Rosado? Aye. ATAC? Aye. Star? Aye. Transit? Aye. Wool? Aye. Fisher? Aye. O'Brien? Aye. Callahan? Aye. Homan? Aye. Mueller? Aye. Otterman? Aye. Cerrone? Aye. McFadden? Aye.